and I just wanted to recap for you kind of the basic three steps for you to make sure that everything you put your hand to in your business this year prospers. Everything that you invest your heart and time and energy and even capital in, you need to bring profit from that. You need to bring blessings back from that. It needs to bring business profit into your business, right? So this is how I teach it. Before I give you those three steps really quickly, and today will just be just a brief little video, um, but I wanted to do it. I wanted to bring it here to the free group so that you at least had kind of this idea of how to structure your business activities this year. Um, but a scripture that I, a few scriptures that I love about planning and about business. I think that we forget that the Bible is such a great business manual. Um, but one of them is Luke 14, 28. And it's about planning. It's about the value of planning. It says, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? So that's a great tool right there is to remember that, yeah, we have to sit down and plan this thing out in order to see success from our efforts. Proverbs 16, 3 is another good one. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. If we have him at the helm and he is leading us and we are following his will with this thing and we're looking to the scripture for guidance and we're listening to that voice in Isaiah 30, 21, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, follow it, whether it turns to the left or to the right. When we do that, everything we do in this business will prosper. That doesn't mean we prosper every second of every day of every activity. But this is a long game. This is a long-term activity, if you will. And the prospering sometimes is down the road. But you will prosper. You will bring results. You will bring profit. Okay, so what I wanted to recap with you straight out of our previous planning day that we had um, is three key things to do. And this is something you're going to do now if you haven't already done it. It's something you're going to do quarterly, monthly, weekly, and even daily. And I don't mean that you do everything I'm going to talk about every single day. You break it down and work backwards from it every single day, if that makes sense. So let me explain. Okay. First step is constantly assess. Constantly look at what is and isn't working. Um, so assessment is always the first step to breaking through and doing things in a better way for better results, right? Looking back, tracking, actually looking at the numbers, your activities, what they generated, you know, always looking at those things. There are multitudes of free tracking sheets out there on Pinterest and the web um, that you can use. Or you can just, in my case, I use a good old notebook you know, or blank sheet of paper, and you go to your website, you go to your email list, you go to your social media numbers, start there. But you could go to Pinterest to find out what should I be tracking as an online business owner? You know, what should I actually be looking at? You need to track your spendings and profits, your income, your expenses, right? So there's a lot to track. And one of these days, I'll do a full training on it so that we can really get into what you track. Now, Inside your free community library on Thinkific, there is a little package of tracking sheets, journaling sheets, basically quarterly um, pl business planning aids. Okay, those are inside. Those are PDFs and they are inside of your community library on Thinkific. So if you haven't signed up for that yet, raise your hand here, tag me and tell me you need that. I'll also put the link to it below just in case you're someone who hasn't found that tool that's available to you yet. There's so much good stuff in there, but that's one of them. And so that will provide a little bit of help with this idea. Okay. So that's step number one, assessing what is and isn't working in order to move forward and break through any old patterns of, man, I do this every year and I still end up still in debt or I still end up upside down or whatever the struggle might be, not making enough, not replacing my J-O-B, you know, whatever it is for you. The second step, which is a key to your success, is 
goal setting. So you move from assessing and tracking and looking it all over on a regular basis to now I need to make sure I have in front of me what I am trying to achieve this year, this quarter, this month, these next two weeks of January. So you, you would set your overall vision, then you would pull back from that and break it down into your quarterlies, which is every three months, right? And then break those down into your monthly. In that goal setting, you're gonna do a little bit of business math and you're gonna look at your financial goal, what your bread and butter offering is going to be, what's that main offering, that signature program or signature offering that's going to bring you the money to replace the J-O-B or to make enough money in your business or whatever money goals you have. So am I offering one-on-one -on -one coaching right now? That's fine. Have your price in front of you. Have your packages in front of you. Have it in front of your audience on your website. But to set goals, you do still have to have that financial goal. No, we don't chase money. We're different from the world that way. That's not our leading factor, but it has to be in front of us for us to know what we're working towards, okay? And then do the math on how many people will I need to enroll and can I, can I realistically serve to meet this goal? Is my pricing on point? Um, is it realistic for the people that I currently serve or want to serve? So lots of things to sit down and map out, and that's what we actually did in great detail on our workshop. You also need to set some growth goals, not just for you. Those are good too. You know, what you want to read, if you're going to attend anything for your growth, if you're going to do any Bible studies or anything like that that's going to help you grow, but also your business growth goals. What do you want to grow your readership to? your social media following, your YouTube subscribers or views, um, email list numbers, okay? So lots of things to look at for growth goals. And those need to be written down and journaled about and put in front of you. They need to be up where you can see them. You need to be checking them off as you start meeting them. So this needs to be very visual, very in front of you, very obvious, okay? Goal setting. now. Another important step inside of the step of goal setting is getting realistic about your time, what days of the week you have available to you, how many hours on each of those days, and then the tasks that have to be done just to keep your business running, but also those extra tasks for creating content, writing your book, creating your signature program, you know, those extra creation hours on top of the weekly, week after week, I have to do this every single week to keep my business going, which is very common and very necessary. I'm either gonna do it myself or pay someone to help me do it, right? Or delegate it some other way. There's lots of different ways to delegate. Um, you gotta sit down and look at, okay, I only have Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from noon to four. That's all I have. Or I only have Saturdays half a day and two weeknights to do this. You have to get real about that. And in those hours, you get real about, okay, all the things that need to be done, there's only this many hours available and there's this much that needs to be done. You're either going to scale up or scale down. So you can either scale down in your activities and make that realistic, but then that's not going to grow you. Or you find a way to scale up, which is delegating, bringing help, paying to outsource a little bit of it, um, and or kind of reprioritizing what's most important. So lots of creativity involved here, but being realistic about getting that timeline in front of you. That's another thing that we did in great detail in the uh, planning day. And then in your goal setting, I think it's super important to talk about accountability, support. As you go, life gets really hard with these goals and these things we commit to. And life keeps happening, challenges keep happening, and it gets hard sometimes to stay the course. Do you have some accountability in place? Um, do you need accountability? You know, is that something that you don't have in place? Remember, we opened up our success circle. It's only 37 a month for those of you who are alumni, and it's 47 a month for those of you who are not. It is worth it. Accountability all over the place in there. From me and from each other as peers, and even our peer mentors are in there as well. So we're having threads going. We've got uh, Q&As and check-ins going on. But... It's all optional. You can just use the library or use the 
discussion accountability. You have to figure out what you need to make this work for you, to keep doing this. You guys know that I believe so strongly in working with people who see this as a long game. I don't like the quick, quick um, mentality. Oh, I need quick money, quick fix, quick, you know, no, we don't do that here. We are all about the long game. So in the long game, it is absolutely necessary to have accountability. I just wrote a blog post on the blog. Uh, I think I published it last week, so it's fresh. You can go find it at christianhealthcoachcommunity.com. And I wrote it about me and my accountability buddy and how we do it and what happened with that and how my business is so different and better from having her as my buddy for accountability in my life. Some people hire business coaches for accountability. Some people get into masterminds for it. So it depends on your level, what you need, okay? Our success circle is not a mastermind, but it is definitely the place for peer support and accountability. All right, so you're also, when you're setting your goals, you're also gonna look at areas in your business to focus most on for making changes. I actually give a sheet here of like 20 different areas or 15 different areas. And then I tell you, choose three to five of them. So for instance, I list your branding or your message and or message, client communication skills, marketing, closing the sale techniques and streamlining the client process, time and task management, business debt repayment, planning and projecting, becoming more spirit led and less distracted. You're gonna only choose a couple things to work on first, commit to them, Follow through and really ground that before you move into those other areas. You don't want to be trying to fix all these areas at once. Okay? So that's another thing about goal setting. You're only putting in front of you what's most important for you to scale, grow, and move forward right now. Where you're at and where you're trying to go. We do this thing step by step, bit by bit. Okay, so that's that's a little bit about the goal setting portion of these three steps to success. The final step would be you've, you've assessed and tracked, you've set your new goals. Now we need to talk about your content sharing. That's always gonna be your third most important step to planning for business success in 2022. Inside of content sharing, you guys know there's plenty of free resources on this in the library, again, so I'll put that link in case you're not in there yet. Um, get in there and get into Thinkific because there's some resources for this. And I'm about to add some more. I'm going to add an idea list from our academy. I'm going to share it with you guys. So be sure you're in there so you get access to it. In sharing your content, you need to plan this ahead of time. There's multiple different ways to plan content. I can't do a full training on it today, but I just want to put the bug in your ear that content sharing is you getting a really clear topic list going per week of the year or per month of the year, however it is you're gonna do this. Are you gonna do two blog posts a month or a blog post per week or two blog posts per week or just two emails per week or social media only? What are you gonna do? Where are you gonna put your content? And what are you, where are you planning to share the bits of it to get your content sharing plan out there in front of people where they can read, listen, view, consume, um, pull down PDFs you give them, whatever it is you're gonna do for the freebie and the low cost things you offer. The idea of this is that you sit down, you map it out, you use those topics that people are already asking you questions about. You're already kind of figuring out what your unique message is. Yes, you're, we're all giving the same message here as far as holistic healthy living, wholesome healthy living, you know, making choices for our health. You know, it's the same basic message, but we each have our own unique special areas of that that we already are figuring out we should share from, whether from your experience, your toolbox of life, or just a passion God's brought to your heart. So you're going to organize that into some topics, some subtopics, okay? And then out of those subtopics, you organize how you wanna share this in what places online and in your business. And what's gonna be free, 
what's going to be low cost and what you're going to charge more for. So it takes a little bit of planning. Um, if you want this entire long detailed training with the entire workbook, I do have a special after the fact rate for it. It's $27 and you'll get the recording and the workbook, 27 bucks. Um, if that's something you want, let me know. Tag me on here and let me know that and I will get you the button and get you those downloads. But if you already kind of have this content planning figured out on your own, awesome. Also in our Everything You Need to Know free course, there is a little booklet on your content planning and your branding and messaging. So that kind of takes you a little further than what we've done today. So that's a free resource if you prefer that. But the point is to get this in front of you. Have it very visible, very much right in front of you so that you stay focused on your business plan, what you're going to share with the people God's speaking to you to serve, and how and where you're going to share that.